This video is on how to create the skull button on Tinkercad. So the instructions are over here on the left hand side and usually they include a photo and you can click on it to see it a little bit larger and get a better idea of what we'll be creating. The first step says to drag a cylinder shape to the work plane. So we're going to drag it into these orange guidelines here. The next step is to scale it to a height of 2 millimeters and a diameter of 16. So it's a little bit hard to use some of the controls here when you're so far away. So I'm going to use the wheel on my zoom to scroll in. You can also use the plus or minus button here or the plus or minus button on your keyboard. So to scale it to a height of two, I'm going to click this top square and I'm going to pull it down until I see two millimeters. We're also going to create a diameter of 16 millimeters. So on a circle, a diameter is all the way across and the radius is from the center point to the outside right here. So to get it evenly 16 and 16, you can click the corner square and then hold the shift key on your keyboard until you get to 16. Holding the shift key will constrain the sizes so that it will be an equal circle. Now the only issue with doing that is when I do that, sometimes it will also scale the height. It hasn't in this instance. Another way to scale is to click the corner, click the corner once and let go, and then type in 16, enter, 16, press enter on your keyboard. And now I'm just going to line it up with this guideline here a little bit better. Okay. Next step is we're going to drag a box shape to the work plane. And again, I'm going to put them in these guidelines. Next step is I'm going to scale it to a height of two millimeters and a size of eight by eight. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the cylinder and I'm going to pull this down to two millimeters. And then I'm going to scale it to eight by eight. So again, I'm going to click the corner once. You'll see that it's highlighted in red when you click it. And then I'll choose eight, enter, eight, enter. And it should line up perfectly if you had put the box in the orange guideline. The square should be centered and this is going to end up being the mouth of the skull. Next we're going to drag a cylinder shape to the work plane and we're going to make it a hole. So up here in the in this box is called the inspector and right now it's a solid orange, but I can select hole and you'll see that it's slightly transparent or see-through. The hole shape we use to overlap with other shapes so that when we group them, it will cut out the shape that is a hole. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So the next is to scale it to a size of two by two millimeters. So we're not changing the height here, we're just scaling both sides. And it should line up about where this guideline is, and you should have something that looks sort of like a pole. Next we're going to copy and paste this three times, and we're going to put it in these areas right here. So to copy and paste you can either hit Control C and then Control V three times, or you can select this button up here, control C or copy, and then the paste button is directly next to it, and I'm gonna hit that three times. So now I have a total of four cylinders. And I'm gonna drag each of these to these spots highlighted in orange. I'm not sure why this is here. 
you shouldn't have this. But for some reason, mine has that. I'm just going to put it right over it so it will cut it out. Okay. Make sure that these are not solid. If they are solid, they will not cut out. What we're trying to do is cut out four holes here for the eyes. So make sure that you can see through these slightly. Next, we're going to drag a box to the work plane and we're going to make it a hole. So you can select the box here and make it a hole or Tinkercad has at the very top a box and a cylinder as a hole because those are the two shapes used most often as holes. So you can select these ones that are in the gray stripes. Next we're going to scale it to a height of two millimeters by one by four. So one is the width, four is the length. Oh, I'm sorry, the length by the width. So one, enter. Four. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit because when you're far away like this and then you try to grab something, you might end up grabbing one of the corners and resizing it. And as a reminder, control Z is the function to undo something. Or you can choose these arrows here, undo or redo. I'm going to move this to this section here. Now, we need to put it in this orange box, however, it's not letting us. And the reason is, if you notice, on the work plane, there are little squares everywhere. Each of these squares on the grid represent one millimeter. And right now we have our snap grid set to one millimeter, which means that every time we move an object, it snaps or it gets sticks to, one. it jumps to one millimeter marks. So down in the right hand corner, there's something called the snap grid, and you can change it to be any of these measurements, but I'm going to turn it off. That way I have more flexibility to put it anywhere on the work plane, not just on those squares. Next, we're going to copy and paste the box four times into these areas. So I'm actually, instead of copying and pasting, I'm going to duplicate. Now when you duplicate, it ends up duplicating right on top of itself. So remember that because sometimes people will duplicate and then it will, they'll think that it never worked when actually it's just hidden right on top of itself. So I'm gonna click and drag this over. And then I'm just going to simply hit the duplicate and repeat button again and you'll notice it will jump the same measurement that I moved it over. Although it did move down a little bit so I'm just going to fix these a little. Okay. I would orbit on top so you can see whether or not they're lined up, which they look like they're lined up. Now we're going to drag a roof shape to the work plane. We're going to scale it to a height of three and the length and width are also going to be three. Three. Three, enter. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because this is a little bit small and I'm going to move it over here. Next, we are going to rotate the roof so that the, this face, the triangle face, is facing upwards. So to rotate it up, there are three different ways to rotate. This one rotates on the ground. This one rotates in a circle this way, so I can move the point of the roof upside down. And then if I orbit a little bit this way, or rotate, I can rotate this all the way 90 degrees. 
If you hold the shift key, it will snap to 45 and 90 degree angles. So you should have this triangle facing up, and then it says to make it a hole. Next, I'm going to move this into the center here. This is going to be the nose. That looks about right. And then the final step is to select all the shapes and to group them into one single object. So again, make sure that these pole looking shapes are holes, the triangle shape is a hole, and these rectangles at the bottom are a hole because those are what we want to cut out. So I'm going to select all by clicking and dragging a red bounding box around all of the shapes. And then I'm going to select group or control G. And there you go. So it should be fully cut out. If you do not see the bottom of the work plane through these shapes, then you might have something wrong. You might have one of your whole pieces lifted up a little bit too high. And finally, if you'd like, you can click on solid and you can change it to whatever color you would like. And that's it. Thanks for watching.